The pain associated with my cancer was significant. It grew over time, it grew more intense. It grew from the area of the coccyx out to my, my two hips and down to my legs. And it got progressively worse and nothing that the doctors could do, despite their best efforts, could deal with that pain. I was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer in uh, June 2004. After three years, it metastasis to my right hip and all over my bones. Before, I'm really so active. I do everything, I can go anywhere, but when I had that severe pain on my bone, everything is uh, stopped. I just want to be stay at home, I want to stay in bed, and I can't do anything even though I want to do something in the house, I can't do it anymore. I suffered the pain more than 16 months. The pain had become so extreme, as I indicated already, that, that we were becoming a little bit scared, I would say, about what the future was going to be. Am I going to get in worse pain? Is the pain going to remain where it is for the rest of my life? As his wife, I was stunned by the progression of pain. It really affected absolutely everything in our life. Whether it was Christmas and we're trying to sit around the tree with my daughters and their family, and he spread out on the couch, unable to really participate. I was surprised at the progress of the pain, that it went from annoyance to overwhelming inability to get out of bed. He was in a prone position, I would say, probably 23 hours a day. It was very hard. He started out on opioids, the, the most mild. That didn't work. It, went, it progressed, it progressed, it progressed. We got up to, I don't even know what is the strongest opioid that he was on, but I do know that when he was hospitalized for the extreme pain, he was on um, intravenous morphine, and also delouded, neither of which made more, than a, more of a difference after the first 10 minutes. So it really affected everything in our family, everything as a couple, everything as the extended family. Um, it was really tough. I, I never tell her this, you know, but deep within me, I feel more hurt than her. Because whenever I see her in a in a in a painful, you know, mode, you know, I just can't take it. But I just hide my feelings, because I had to be strong. You can't do anything, you know. You you just see her, you know, just constantly in pain, and it's so 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 hard to take, honestly. Yeah, they give me medication, like you know the narcotics one to relieve my pain, but I cannot take the narcotics up pain medication because it keep me vomiting and more sick. Would you want to take a bunch of pills every day? Narcotics, and we all see the epidemic that's occurring now. What's associated with taking medications? Sure, you'll get pain relief to a certain extent, but what happens with it? Well, addiction, it's very common. There is a tolerance that you develop with medications so you reach a point where the receptors on your bodies are maxed out. The other side effects that come with it, constipation. That You just don't know how you're going to deal with the pain that you're experiencing if everything that they've given you so far hasn't worked. This cancer affected my lifestyle. The initial pain was in a place where you know, I, I could not sit for a while. I got to the point where I never ate a meal probably for more than a while without lying down being in a, in a backwards position. During the course of this progression, I was seeing um, pain medication doctors and their solution early on was, was to come up with some um, medical, uh, some, some chem chemical, some pill that could make it be better. What was interesting to me was that I've been through at this point um, a number of opioids, I've been through morphine, I've been through all kinds of uh, medications that are designed to deal with pain. I discovered the cryotherapy use for treating pain really by Googling it. <laughs> I um, Googled um, pain treatment for bone cancer or cancer in the bone and 
I came up with a long list of things and just started reading. And one of them mentioned cryotherapy with the freezing needles and how it had had extraordinary success with the pain that is caused by cancer in the bone. The thing that really helped for me was when the doctor drew diagrams. And he had a piece of paper and he sat here with a pen and drew what he was going to do. The initial consult with Dr. Agbalie uh, was indeed interesting because I had to conduct it on my stomach because of all the pain. Um, but he went through in a very logical, very sequential, very assuring way that this new technology could indeed freeze the area of the bone and make the pain go away. But I needed to hear that. I needed to hear that this was just not another opioid. I needed to hear that this was a, a technology that was uh, cutting edge, that it was achievable, uh, that it was patient friendly. I, I need to be able to say that about the technology. By the way, doctor explained it to us, you know, if your pain level is 10, which is the topmost level, if I could make, put it down to two, are you going to be happy? And when my wife heard that, you know, she said, hey, you know, I never had, you know, any chance to feel that kind of, you know, pain at level two only. Initially, Dr. Egbalia told me that, you know, this, this is a really easy procedure. You're going to be awake the whole time and everything uh, will, will move smoothly. So when I get consults or patients that come to see me, the first question is, well, doc, we have heard something about this cryotherapy for bone. What does it entail? How does it work? And it's very easy for me to explain it to them because I always draw a picture. And drawing pictures in relation to bone is easy because doesn't, you don't have to be the best artist for it. You can draw a quick picture. But you're basically, everything in the body has nerves. Everything has a sensation or a tactile feel. The bones have nerves as well. So when you're using this cryotherapy, you're basically freezing the nerves in the bone by freezing them, you're killing the cells. You're killing the nerve cells. So that's how I explain to patients how cryotherapy works. This is basically the needle. If you look, it's really not much bigger than the, sometimes the tip of the pen, mm -hmm. right? Or the ink part of the pen. So this is what's gonna be introduced into the skin. There's measurements on here. And again, we're doing this all under imaging. So it's very safe. We're not guessing where it's going. I'm gonna get it to where I need it. So it's gonna create an ice ball. Now the ice ball is gonna be based off of which type of probe I use or what measurement in that probe that I have. And I can make it conform to different shapes and lengths or widths based off of what I want. So if you start having less pain, we're doing it correctly, okay? And that's what I genuinely anticipate for today. I tell them that there is no question that you're gonna get pain relief with cryotherapy. It's instantaneous, and that's how I usually assess how their pain is on the table. As, it's ha as we're doing the cryotherapy, I assess the patients and they communicate, I don't feel pain. And that's usually a good stopping point. So within minutes to an hour, they're gonna feel complete relief. And when she came back, you know, when she came back from the actual procedure to the room, you know what, what I saw? First, I saw a smiling wife that I've never seen for so long time. Long, long time, she never smiled. It's only that particular moment, and I was so happy that I could cry, really, you know. That's, that's one of the feelings that, you know, that I can never forget. After the procedure of the cryotherapy, yeah, I, all my pains are gone. I'm so really, really happy. I don't have pain anymore. And I wanna live, I wanna live more. <laughs> From the time we got into the, uh, the room where, where the procedure was to be held, uh, from th to the time I made it back to um, my bed in the hospital, um, I can honestly say that I felt no pain. So, he started getting a life back and we actually went on a cruise 
and <laughs> manage to um, enjoy ourselves. But the pain at the site that was treated was gone and it was like a hundred percent improvement. I've been a nurse for 23 years. I've worked for Providence for 20 years. I've worked in oncology. I've seen patients with intractable pain, pain that is so bad that they're not able to walk to the bathroom. Um, I've seen a patient who had a procedure called a, a cryotherapy and come back from the procedure and they were able to walk that day. And it was just a miracle. And I was so pleased with the procedure. I had never seen anything like it in my 23 years, that you could just go to have procedure one day and then to find out that you can do this procedure and you get your life back, you get your independence back, you get everything back. And to be relieved from pain because after that lung of pain, pain medicine no longer works. Patients do not need to take opioids. They don't have to deal with the side effect of opioids instantaneous relief, the quality of life changes, and it takes the focus from the physician being able to now not only focus on what we're treating, but not have to worry about their pain management. And with cryo, I think that is inevitable that this is going to be the path of the future, and it's exciting being able to see patients go through this. We're fortunate here at Providence Holy Cross Medical Center to have a system like EndoCare and use their device and do the bone cryotherapy. But I think in the years to come, it's gonna become more and more frequent and there'll be more physicians and interventional radiologists using it as they personally experience the technology, the patient population, and the instant pain relief that goes with it. I think the moment that, the, that he says, okay, we're done, was the moment that I first began to become aware that the pain had gone someplace else, it was no longer in me at that spot. If someone came to me and asked me if, if the process and the procedure was worth it, it um, in both the short and the long run, I would give an unequivocal yes.